all the dishes. You're setting the table. You know, I used to be like that. And one day, my husband, I, I went to a conference like this. And someone said something like, like this. Several years ago. I think about, about 28 years or something ago. So I got back home and I set the table and I was sweating. And my little son came up and said, Mom, who are we expecting? <laughs> I said, it's your dad. He said, <laughs> Dad, is it that important? So even the children are watching because they are innocent learners. How do you set your husband's table? Do you dish it out? Some of you, you have beautiful dishes. You stack them up for Jehovah Wickedness people. <laughs> so come and inherit after the rapture. The same plate your husband has been using to eat since Canada was founded. <laughs> it's still the same plate. It's all this rickety is still the same plate. Same set of cutlery. Excuse me, go out and change. Go out and change and buy new sets and change regularly. My husband's seat is different. I'm a pastor's wife. My dining set has 14 chairs. We always have a crowd. My husband's seat is different and you dare not sit on it. He's a king in this kingdom. He faces his pressures and ministry and all that. So when he comes home, I want him to come to his, his kingdom, his empire with expectation. His tension is, is, is busting. He's happy. He's, he's, he's looking forward. When last did you receive your husband or welcome him with a book in your hand? At the door. Mm. Ah, Some of you, your children have taken the places of your husbands. And you keep making sure that children come in between you. Don't finish that meal. It's my husband. That yogurt is for my children. And your husband is wondering. Every time, every time. My children, my children, my children. In 25 years time, those children will have gone. If they don't go, you will pray, God, please take them. Let them go. Let them go and get married. Please, Lord. And it will be just you and the man. And sometimes you will be lonely, even though you are two. Because you did not build that relationship over the years. So it's important for you to please feed the man correctly. Stop giving him the same meal every day. Learn as a woman. The way you set the table, the way you lay the bed, the way you mix the meals, be creative. Serve him. Let him know that you have his time. It's important for you to do this. After the man had eaten and drunk, speaking to you, married men, Stop giving your husband same carbohydrates every minute, every day. Think. Think. Sometimes you need to stop watching some of these channels and, and go learn some things about how to make you know, food and all that. Serve him correctly. Let your husband feel special. Make him a king in your home. Even if you are not married, you can start learning and prepare for the future. There's no man you treat like a king that will not treat you like a queen. Oh, do your own part and trust God. The fourth thing, when Boaz had eaten, I'm really rushing because of the time and we have evening service. When Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry. That's the fourth thing. You must constantly make your husband happy. Give him joy. Stop noticing every mistake. Stop nagging. Every time there is a quarrel, Every time. When your marriage was one year, you will quarrel for one week, you won't talk. Now that your marriage is 10 years, it's still the same. When will you grow up? 25 years. You still keep Christian malice. You know Christian malice. How are you? Blessed. <laughs> Pass the salt. 
I'm fine. As Christian man is, we are talking. Am I not talking to you? I'm talking. If the rapture comes, that's not right. Let him be happy. Make him happy. When last did you tickle your husband? When last did you put a little fish in your mouth and you just tiptoed and you came from the back and you put it in his mouth? When last did you do that? You know, sometimes I just I just move towards my husband and I just tickle him. And he does like that say, You are not even a virgin. <laughs> When last did you pillow your head on your husband's chest while he's watching Arsenal and Baka? <laughs> when last you stay in the kitchen for two hours, what are you cooking? <laughs> you can't even come around. That's why as a woman you must improve on yourself. You must know a little about everything. Isn't that your husband and your children are discussing? I see. I see. What did you see? You can't even contribute anything. I see. You don't even know the name of any club. You don't even know. No, you say, and they say Barcelona. Say, is it the wife of uh, Obama? It's a woman. No man wants an old bride around him. You must keep improving on yourself. Even if you're a great grandmother, you're somebody's wife. And it is your responsibility to make that man happy. Make him laugh. Stop dwelling on all his mistakes. Be happy. Sometimes my husband puts me on his back, you know, and all that. Sometimes I, I try to put him on my back. He's bigger than me, you know. I just want to call forth the little boy on his inside. Come out. Come and laugh. Come, you know, and all that. I was watching, um, I was watching you, your body language. And I said to myself, they are truly happy. If you are happy, you can't hide it. You see some couples? <laughs> the woman wants to speak to them. Yes. <laughs> I always looking straight. What is wrong with you? Why did you get married? Marry your friend. It's not every time you have sex. I've been married 31 years. It goes down after some time. I'm telling you, if your life is based on sex, you've lost it. So there must be other things that will keep the marriage going. As the man ages, the generator is also... <laughs> it's true. Ah, well, when you're married, you could, do, you could have sex four times a day. In the kitchen, in the bathroom, anyhow, anywhere. That's why I always tell couples, when you're newly married, don't let anybody interfere, because you need to bond. It will tell in the evening of your marriage. It will tell in later years. Sex is like the water that mixes the sand and the cement in building. So you must have it anywhere. It doesn't have to be initiated by the man. It's a sign of immaturity to say, until my husband, I don't want to appear cheap. Excuse me, you are living in Stone Age. <laughs> It's your husband, it's your marriage. Because some of us are Afri we have African backgrounds. You don't want to say, I want sex. Okay, let me teach you what to say. <laughs> As you are serving, maybe you're serving his food or something, just whisper to him in case the children are there. I want a flight to Jerusalem tonight. <laughs> Tonight, I'd like you to make deposit without withdrawal. <laughs> he knows what we're talking about. Coin your own language. Coin your own language. Hallelujah. Why are you laughing? Be spiritual now. Be spiritual. So the man's heart was merry. 
make your husband happy. You determine, you dictate the mood of your marriage. As a woman, it's your partner.